Hi, everybody. I'm Dennis Daly. I spent 20 years with United Press International, most of it with the old UPI radio network. And my favorite assignment was going on the road producing and hosting American Montage. It was an hour-long weekly program. Now here's an edited version of one of those shows. I guess we all have our heroes in broadcasting, people we love to listen to. And for years, David Dow was a member of the CBS News team on TV, but more often heard on radio and associated with KNX in Los Angeles. David Dow and I both covered the second O.J. Simpson trial, and after that trial was over, he and trial attorney Marjorie Cohn wrote a wonderful book called Cameras in the Courtroom. It deals with that very thorny issue. And it's interesting because it's done from the perspective of both an attorney and a journalist who often might have conflicting ideas on whether cameras should be present. I talked to David Dow and Marjorie Cohn about the book, and I asked David how he and Marjorie first got the idea to write it. I think initially we both thought it was just a fascinating topic, and and whatever opinions, whatever uh, prejudices, if you will, we may have harbored on this were sort of secondary. We were quite willing to uh, delve into what was a fascinating issue and a very hot issue at that time, particularly given the role that it had played in in, uh, some of the controversies during the O.J. Simpson murder trial, that uh, we just wanted to plow into it and see where it took us. Interesting, if you look back at the history, and I'm, I'm... Of course, broadcasting only goes back a certain distance. When I knew I was going to do this interview, the first thing I thought was of the Scopes trial, which I think WGN in Chicago came down. At that time, there was no television. But um, we have, back into our history, examples of very heavily media-covered trials. I just wondered if if, if you know historically what the reaction was, what the Monday morning quarterbacking was after that. Well, the Scopes trial, in terms of uh, the issue of whether broadcasting uh, entities should be allowed into courtrooms or not, didn't generate nearly the uh, emotion that the O.J. Simpson trial of its age did, which was the Lindbergh kidnapping trial. Yes. That was the first trial where, uh, unlike the Scopes trial, where actual cameras and the television cameras of their age, movie cameras, were in a courtroom. And it was uh, out of that case, rightfully or wrongfully, that a lot of the prohibitions uh, that uh, uh, dominated uh, the relations between the media and courts for decades after that were born. Uh, There was a a lot of blaming the messenger because uh, the Lindbergh trial was, as was said of the uh, the O.J. Simpson trial, that it was a circus. And of course, it was a trial that uh, brought out celebrities to the gallery and uh, brought out a huge, huge crowd of news people, just as the O.J. Simpson case did. And this, of course, is back in the early 30s. Marjorie, the constraints that are put on the media, are these local, state, national? Can, can you put into perspective at the current time who decides or what decides whether there will indeed be various levels of coverage? Each state has its own rules governing camera coverage. And 48 out of the 50 states allow some type of television in the courtroom. My communications major came from Stanford University. My recollection is there was one course, it was called something like uh, covering public affairs, one semester, which embraced city council meetings, boards of supervisors meetings, and the courts, and we got a little sample of each. The issue of cameras in the courtroom was not even mentioned, I am sure, even Mm -hmm. though that's now many years ago, simply because it was a very dormant period for that issue. Uh, I was uh, in college in the late 50s when, when basically there were almost no cameras in any courtrooms in America, and uh, the uh, atmosphere was, was dominated by a quasi-legal uh, code of the uh, American Bar Association, which in effect barred cameras from courtrooms. So it was a, it was a non-issue at that time. There's also something else, and I was talking to a friend the other day who does not live in L.A., and he said, how come everything that happens in L.A., we see it? Every time there's somebody being chased by the police, we see that. And the reason is there's just so darn many cameras anymore. I mean, when I was covering the Simpson trial, I did a survey. There was nearly $2 million worth of camera equipment ringing that courthouse one day. And I really think that that part of the reason why we have all these questions now is they're not necessarily cheap, but cameras are everywhere. 
and and we could have put cameras in the courtroom years ago we had the technology and it was being done but it just there was not this proliferation of equipment maybe i'm being too technical here but i've i've always thought that we now have a situation where we can cover everything in much more minute detail it's interesting you should say that because for the most part trials that are televised today are broadcast through one remotely operated camera either on the ceiling or mounted above the jury or behind the jury box such as in the Simpson case so they're much less obtrusive and I think this is one of the reasons that judges may not object to them quite as much because the physical camera itself is not as intrusive now the effects of the televising may or may not be obtrusive and that's a different issue but there's also you've also touched on uh, another development in this whole uh, running saga and that is your friends who say they're seeing more and more things on television in California are probably not seeing more and more from courtrooms in California. One of the offshoots of the O.J. Simpson murder trial was, in fact, a backlash that was most pronounced here in California against cameras in the courtroom. For the most part, that backlash was short-lived in other states, but it persists to this state. The Rule 980, which governs uh, the admission of of uh, cameras to California courtrooms was rewritten so that, in effect, a judge, for no reason at all, can bar a camera from a courtroom in California. Mind and, in fact, and, in fact, fewer and fewer cameras are getting into courtrooms in California at the moment. Have we seen cases where the presence of a camera during a trial became some grounds to appeal later? Yes. In the mid-60s, the Supreme Court grappled with that issue in the case of Billy Saul Estes, who was convicted of swindling, and whose conviction was overturned on appeal because the Supreme Court thought that the presence of cameras in a small part of his trial had actually denied him the right to a fair trial. Is there remote control on a camera where the, the director, if you will, can decide what the audience at home sees, or quite often is it just a static camera? Typically today you've got uh, one of two situations. You have a, it, it, almost always it is one pooled camera. In other words, one camera in the courtroom shooting the proceedings for a number of news organizations. Uh, that's to, to, to keep down the, the, uh, uh, the baggage, if you will. Uh, it can be one of two situations, uh, a traditionally conventionally operated uh, camera, almost always fixed, usually in a remote corner of the courtroom, the back of the courtroom, one camera operator, uh, no lights, and uh, depending upon the rules of the court and the rules of the state, he may be limited in what he can actually depict in that courtroom. The most common rationale for barring a camera in California co courtrooms has been, four words, the O.J. Simpson trial. The last five instances where I've seen a camera barred from a courtroom, a judge has said simply, I don't want another Simpson trial. Now, whatever that means, because I think that is a, a terrible oversimplification, I think that there is history will record uh, well into the future that there was only one O.J. Simpson murder trial and uh, no other trial could quite be like that and I think it's just become a convenient crutch for for judges. The book is called Cameras in the Courtroom. David Dow and Marjorie Cohn, you both came at this from uh, different perspectives. Uh, you've done an awful lot of work on this and uh, I, I think it's a topic that's not going to go away, and certainly people will be using this book for a very long time. Thanks for taking the time. Thank you, Dennis. Thank you. And there you have it, another edited episode of one of the American Montage programs prepared for the UPI Radio Network back in the 1980s and 90s. I'm Dennis Daly. Thanks for listening. Thanks for going with me this week. And check YouTube for more American Montage programs.